Before we get into today's topics and questions, did you have anything that you wanted to speak on before we got into it? Uh, no, you know, this is my normal spill. Y'all please go and support us on Facebook and TikTok and Instagram. Y'all, even those that support us on YouTube channel, appreciate it if y'all go and help us get our subscribership up over there. And, f and of course, still podcast, still bombing podcast. If y'all can go subscribe to that for us, we'll greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, later on during the week, and later on during the week, we're going to be doing some stuff with James uh, on YouTube and the podcast. So, appreciate it if y'all uh, go and support that. Uh, appreciate all of the all of y'all that are over there supporting the uh, the uh, Compton Cop story that I did over there on Vlad. I know a lot of y'all was disappointed and uh, was wondering why we didn't do it over here at Bomb First. And uh, the only reason is just because uh, that was a big production, the type of cameras and all of that. Unfortunately, uh, Vlad has that and he has the budget to do stuff like that. But we're going to be getting it. If it takes off and do well, trust me, Bomb First is my home. So we'll be getting it done over here as well uh, with a little bit more juice and spice to it. Uh, other than that, uh, yeah, happy month of May. Let's get it started. Okay. Um, speaking of Vlad, um, you know, he did the interview with Keefe D, and I wanted to get your thoughts on something that he revealed that I hadn't heard previously, and that was uh, the night in Vegas after the scuffle at the MGM that Orlando Anderson had a dislocated shoulder, and he actually went to the hospital after the MGM, yet before uh, they met up in the white Cadillac, you know. Uh, I'm not an expert, but I would imagine it would be hard to fire a gun if you just got your uh, your shoulder put back in place. But I just wanted to get your, I didn't want to lead you, I just wanted to get your thoughts on, on him revealing that. Well, you know, <laughs> I I mean, I don't, I, I ain't never been to a hospital where I can get in and, in and out of the emergency room within two hours, to be honest. Um, I would love to know if Las Vegas police have any records of that, uh, especially because I know Orlando ain't had no job. So I don't, I always had health insurance, so I don't know how it works with people that don't have health insurance back in the 90s. I gotta remember y'all live in a different time now. But what I remember about people that didn't have insurance back then, <laughs> you'd be sitting in the waiting room of emergency for hours. But, um, so I don't know. I mean, that'd be stupid for me to try to say it ain't true or whatever because that just kills the whole theory. And that makes the, the, the uh, conspirators believe that, um, uh, what's the word? <laughs> that keep you just up there lying. Um, uh, would make me think that as well. Um, so I think that's a lie. Um, cause he also said he wanted to take Orlando to the club to have a fair one with Tupac, <laughs> um, in a previous interview. That's why they were going up there. Cause he wanted to talk to Suge cause he knows Suge and him and Suge got this great relationship. And he was going to have them come up there and let them fight. Yeah, okay. So I don't, I, I, with Keefe, I don't know what to believe, what not to believe. I tr honestly, truly put my life on it, my kid's life on it, believe that Keefe and L did the shooting. I believe it's between, I would bet 95% Orlando, 5% Big Dre. Uh, other than that, I don't know. But either Keefe is an outright bozo, a liar, or he's coming for Reggie, <laughs> as you stupid conspirators will say. And if y'all know anything about niggas, why would I be calling that nigga a crackhead his wife bent over getting her ankles grabbed by Buntree and all of that if 
That nigga had some dirt on Reg. You know? So, the stupidest stuff I hear are that Orlando and him was a part of a plot. Do y'all know that Keefe sister had a fucking stroke after she heard that he had confessed it and told that incident that happened? She had a stroke. This Keefe, as much as y'all want to hear and talk about it and all of that, and hear him say his family good and they didn't want to see them in jail and all that and prison for life. Man, that's bullshit. Keefe can't go back to Compton, y'all. That shit he did with Compton, with Art the Dialog, man, y'all, really, ask Art. If he, Art gonna keep it real like he normally do, because Art's, you know, always been 100 with people. If y'all ever get a chance to hit him up, he'll tell y'all how his cameraman told him how Keefe was acting. He was scared, made him go at 6, 7 a.m. in the morning and was like, okay, okay, we gotta go. That's too deep for y'all. But niggas from Compton know that nigga cannot go back to Compton unless you just dropping in and out. You know, popping up. Looking like he's in a disguise or something. So, I don't know. I believe it, that they did it. Why he's over there, he gotta have some form of dementia starting to kick in or something. Because I can tell him about five to six different things where it's obviously, if you look back at the interview with Vlad, he looking over at the corner and being coached by somebody. The first interview, we know the guy that wrote the book was there and Vlad was calling him out on stuff like that. So, you know, that segment that aired with Keefe and about the million dollars, you know what, if y'all can't tell from that interview that Keefe is guilty, just stupid, then the only question I wish Vlad would have followed up for when he denied being wired for sound, I wish he would have asked me, well, did you go to New York and try to set Von Zip up? I wish he would have followed up with that question. But Keefe knows. Don't great throw something else out. Niggas from Compton know. It's a nigga named Big Mike. He snitched on him as well. That story gonna come real soon. Big Mike from Spooktown. Ask him why he's over at TI right now doing life. Any of y'all people in the feds, y'all hit up when they're talking, because y'all know everybody talk to people that's in the feds. And everybody that done been in the feds and stuff know Big Mike. Ask Big Mike from Spooktown why he's in there doing life. Behind Keefe D. And we'll get to the zip thing because I want to ask you about that. But I figured that the revelation about Orlando, I don't think it fuels the conspiracy theories other than Possibly Orlando wasn't the person who pulled the trigger. It was somebody else in that car. But um, I guess we'll never really know. Um, well, my question to be like that, about that, well, why? Why would he lay out? See, everybody seemed to think, and even he tried to lie. I don't know why. My boy Vlad didn't catch that. But he tried to lie and say, Oh, what you talking about? Everybody was dead. I was the only one to lie. Man. Terrence Brown died in a Compton marijuana dispensary in 2015. It's a, on, all on the internet. Terrence Brown T-Bone, the driver, in 2015. KPD and this stuff happened with Greg Cadiz in 2009, 2010. Terrence was still alive, T-Bone. But he wants y'all to think it was, but my, so my question to that would be, now Big Dre was dead as well. Why not lay it on Big Dre? Why not tell Big Dre if Big Dre was the one? Shit, he had a, he have, he, 
has an immunity agreement. Why not say he did it? It doesn't make sense, y'all, from the seatings in the car. There's only one of the two in the back seat that did it. Like I said, 5% possibly Big Dre, 95% Orlando is what I believe. Niggas can reach over niggas and shoot. I believe it happened just the way Keefe D says. And y'all all saying, oh, well, he had to be a perfect stop. They will stop at a light. It's easy to do drive-bys. It's a lot of drive-bys where people do miss. But to hit somebody when you're throwing a bunch of bullets and you ain't trying to hit a 10 spot on a target, not that hard, y'all. It's not that hard, especially when the person ain't running and ain't on the move. But yeah, that's my take on that.